Here we're looking at the model CP60H Eagle Bending Machine, pyramid style. I'll be explaining how the optional tooling for rolling angle leg in works with this machine. What you're looking at on the machine, we have the standard tooling, the universal set, thick flange and thin flange on the machine first. I do have a small core spacer behind that, and then I'm filling out the rest of the shaft here. On the center roll or top roll, this is one of the optional tooling for rolling angle. Uh, this actually comes in a set of two. When we roll angle leg in, we'll use uh, one of the rolls on top. This has an adjustment here for the thickness of the angle. This is a close-up of just adjusting the angle roll for angle leg in. There's an adjustable washer on the on the inner portion of the tooling. This is so you can adjust for the thickness of the angle. This is a this shaft is not keyed, so this rotates. For the lower shafts that are keyed, you'll have to adjust it and then slide it onto the shaft. So here I am. I'm adjusting for the thickness, and I'll use the standard tooling then shoulder flange to adjust the gap. And then you complete the rest of the uh, remaining space on the shaft with the existing core spacers. Like so. And what you want is a slip fit of the angle profile. I'll test this. That looks acceptable. The long rollers are used to help guide the angle. Uh, through the machine is to help also to keep angle leg in from kicking back toward the machine. We'll be pushing out with these. These are cam rollers. The angle wants to corkscrew, so we'll be pulling down on the perpendicular leg of the angle to, to control for twist. Now let's put a piece of angle into the machine with the setup for rolling angle leg in. What I, what I have here, I've adjusted the lateral guides out where we're just touching the tip of the of the horizontal leg of the angle. I have a slip fit to the top tooling. I don't want that too loose, but I don't want that too tight, so just a slip fit. Here on the lateral guide, um, this angle, rolling angle leg in will want to kick toward the machine, so I want to support this end. What I'll do, I'll just adjust out and just catch this edge of the angle here with the lateral guides. That's my first adjustment. Here you see a piece of one inch, one by one by an eighth inch stainless steel angle. We're going to roll this to a four foot radius. I've got to have this inserted through the machine. One thing that's important is we want the angle resting on the lateral supports so we can control it uh, from the get go. Now I'm going to move the forming roll down. What will happen is this angle will want to kick up. So I haven't engaged the lateral cam rollers. I'm going to look at the deflection underneath the top roll. I'll eyeball my radius so I can approximate it. I'll move the forming roll down. Once the angle kicks up, then I'll engage the... the Here we're looking at the uh, left-hand side, the exit side of this profile. I've adjusted this forming roll back. I can tell that with this vertical leg here, I want to catch it with this cam roller. And because this is a fairly small angle for this large machine, I've, I've backed this lateral guide off, so I'll do most of my control just here on the cam roller itself. So what I'm going to do is when I move the form, uh, bending roll down, this part will kick up. I'll then catch this uh, with this cam roller here. Okay, let's bend the profile. I have my radius gauge. This first adjustment is a guesstimate. I'm just looking at the deflection underneath the top roll. I want an inside radius, so I'm looking at the deflection here of the part. And when I think that's close enough, then I'll start to roll this material through. Now I've got some unbent straight which I want to roll through. This first part will be dropped because I can't control the part uh, until I capture it with my cam rollers. But I'll move this down. And I'm not going all the way down. I'm going to let this, uh, as the radius comes out, I'm going to let the roll pick it up. The cam roller. Like so. Now we can compare our our gauge here. So I um, need some more adjustment.
Now, I'm not going to try to do this in a single pass. I'll get close. I'll roll this through. Now, let's look at the side of the profile and see how we need to adjust the twist. We're fairly controlled at this point. Now, as I notice this part, I've got a slight camber back toward the machine, so I'm going to adjust out with this assembly. Alright, now I'm going to continue to roll the profile. I'm going to engage this lateral roll here. When I start back in the opposite direction, I'm using the lateral guide to help support it. But I'll still keep it maintained here on the lateral guide. Let's compare our profile. Okay, so I need to tighten this up. So what I'll do is I'll repeat the same operation. I'll need to make adjustments. As I move the spinning roll down, the angle will kick up both on the on each side, so I'll need to adjust up prior uh, before I move my forming roll down. So I need to release the tension off of this before I start back in the opposite direction. With this small angle, it's actually smaller than the, the cam roller here, so I'm going instead of using the, the long roller to help guide the material through, I'm going to back this up. I'm going to engage the cam roller to, to capture the profile and to hold it in line. So I'm going to back off of this lateral guide. All right, that looks pretty good. So what I'll do, I can adjust this down, but what I want to do is when I move the forming roll down, this roll is going to kick up, so I'm not going to capture it just yet. I'm going to let the roll pick it up. Okay, I'm going to do a second pass. Right now, I'm going to release the tension off of this, this cam roller. Since I'll be moving the forming roll down, both uh, ends of the angle will kick up. I'm still going to contain it here slightly. Now let's, and I'll look at, so here I have about yay far to go, so what I'll do is I'll move my forming roll down to make up this difference, approximately. And we'll roll through. Now we've got an unbent straight, so I can't fully engage this roll until I pick up the bent part here. So I, want, I don't want contact until I reach this part or else I'll unbend the profile. I'm going to back up on that. Now I see some, some twist of this angle in this direction, so what I'm going to do is counteract that twist by pulling down on this cam roller. We're forcing this angle to uh, roll straight. I'm also going to uh, pull down on this side as well. And we'll roll that through. All right, now I'm going to release the tension. We'll do the same thing in the opposite direction. 
We'll repeat, we'll go back and forth until we match that, and then we'll have a four foot radius. All right, I'm going to roll a third pass with this piece. I uh, back my cam rollers off. Once again, I'm going to move the forming wheel down. Looking at the flexion through the rolls. I'll be pulling the radius out slightly with this so I can actually overbend slightly. Now we'll roll through. I want to disengage it until I pick up this radius here. Right here we are, we're picking it up. Got a radius. Now, if I want with wide angle, I can actually manipulate that a little bit as it comes through to keep it flat. So it's not necessary that we have to do all of the adjustments of the lateral guy with wider angle. Very good. And here we have a four foot radius. Here's our finished part. We have a uh, flat angle iron that we controlled with our lateral guides at a four foot radius. If you're using multiple passes, you can use the digital readouts on the CP series and the preset stops to repeat your positions each time. When doing so, it's important to look at the calibrations where you had your adjustments for your cam rollers as well. You'll have to repeat those same incremental adjustments to produce the same radius.